Hey guys, unfortunately today's video doesn't have any epoxy, but we are going to show you how to build this white oak coffee table. The first step is to pull the required material. Luckily we had some white oak shorts that were offcuts from another job, so we'll use that for this build. You want to make sure the material is fairly straight to eliminate waste and to achieve the desired thickness of the table. Once you've pulled enough material for your table build, it's time to machine the material. First step is to face joint the material to give ourselves a flat surface on one of the faces. The flat surface will be a great reference point for when the boards go through the planer. After your boards have been face jointed, you can take them to the planer to clean up the opposite side of the board. It will take a few passes for the planer to take the material down to the usable flat surface. You'll want to remove about 1 16th of an inch of material at a time. When gluing up a panel, it is important to be prepared and have all of your clamps close by for a stress-free glue up. You're going to want to make sure you alternate the end grain on each board to eliminate warping. Wood will typically cup away from the center of the trees, so by alternating the grain, you are averaging out the movement of each board. Once you've applied glue to the edge of each board, you can clamp the pieces together and wipe off the squeeze out. Wiping off the excess glue here will make sanding the surface easier and more efficient. There are many ways to cut a circle on the table for this project, and today we chose to use the shaper. We cut all our finger joints on the table saw using this finger joint jig. Cutting finger joints can be an intimidating task, but with a finger joint jig, they can be easily cut and reproduced for future projects. The most important dimension of the finger joint jig is making sure your dado stack matches the fence slash guide. The other important dimension is making sure the gap between the dado stack and the fence equals the width of the dado stack and the fence. Making sure these three dimensions all match are key, as well as making sure that dimension is divisible by the overall width of the table leg you are creating. It's important to sand your table legs before you attach them to the tabletop. This will allow you to easily sand all areas of the legs without the tabletop getting in the way. We will be using the Festool Dominoes to make sure the base is perfectly aligned on the tabletop. We are now ready to attach the tabletop to the table base. We always test fit the base to the top to make sure the glue up will go smoothly. Now that we've got the table assembled and sanded to 150 grit, we are ready to apply the oil finish. We use Rubio Monaco 2C oil on most of our projects because it protects the wood and it's a very user-friendly product. We used Rubio Monaco Super White on this project to give it a whitewashed effect. After we mix the oil with the hardener in a cup, we apply the oil with a squeegee or a spreader. You can also use an old credit card if you don't have a squeegee handy. After the oil is generously spread across the workpiece, you are going to want to wipe off the oil using a blue shop towel or a terry cloth. 
you want to keep wiping until no oil is coming up on the towels and using new towels once they've become saturated. This oil takes 7 days to fully cure, but you can handle or use the piece after 24 hours. If you have any questions or suggestions, we'd be happy to hear about them in the comments section.